Well, hello, everyone. Um, this is Brent Kelly. If you didn't know, this is the Brent M. Kelly page. So it only makes sense that uh, I am the person who is listed on my own page. But um, hey, I wanted to go uh, go live today, and I'll put this on, on YouTube as well. I do plan, I, I've done some Facebook Lives before on my own page and on my uh, BizGrizz company page, but not so much on my speaking entrepreneur page. I'm going to start to do some things here. Uh, I'm very well aware uh, of the fact that I have not used this page for a while and that this may be a ghost town, uh, which is okay. Uh, I'll share it and people can, can look at it later uh, and or I'll kind of gain momentum hopefully as I, as I go through this. But what I like to do is each week, um, I, I currently uh, focus in leadership in the insurance industry. And uh, I do a weekly blog, and I do a weekly podcast. I'd like, also kind of like to make that come alive and do a weekly Facebook live slash YouTube video uh, so that people have different ways to access the content. And uh, so what I want to do is start to do these each and every week. I'm not sure of the exact dates. I'll work on it as I go. Um, not here to put a lot of pressure on myself. Um, but that's kind of the idea of what I'm going to do um, moving forward. And um, so I just wanted to share a little bit today of things that's kind of uh, on my mind, on my heart, and, and, and things that I want to do moving forward uh, in working with, in particular, insurance agency leaders. Uh, that really is my focus. Uh, admittedly, I have been kind of all over the map. Um, I do serve uh, organizations of different capacities and happy to look at that, but as far as my focus of, of who I um, being intentional to speak to, who, who I'm looking to speak to specifically, it's really insurance agency leaders. And uh, before I get in a little bit about these four levels of influence that I want to talk about, um, I want to first maybe just share uh, why this is so important to me, in particular, not just the insurance industry, because that's where I spent really my entire working career before I started my speaking, training, coaching company, but why I'm so focused on insurance leaders, why I hesitated uh, to speak uh, to insurance leaders, uh, but why I'm so passionate about speaking to leaders moving forward. Um, first and foremost is this, is that my story is I spent 15 years as an insurance agent. Right? I sold property and casualty insurance. And, um, you know, and I've, I've written this on some of my blog posts before, but oftentimes the mentality of that is I'm just an insurance agent, right? I'm just an insurance agent. And, um, you know, I didn't understand what leadership was. And over a period of time, though, I, I began to write articles and speak, um, do workshops, keynotes, focusing a lot on insurance sales, marketing, um, really focused to the producer because that's who I was. That's what I know. And I, I did spend a lot of time as a producer. I uh, had some great successes and had many, many, many failures uh, at the same time. So um, that's really where I focused. But what I've realized, particularly for two reasons, one, uh, in trying to build this business, and number two, in the sense, the fact that um, to really, for me to have the greatest effect that I want to have, if I want to add the most value to agents in particular, I need to speak to the leaders. Um, because as I've really understood leadership over the last couple of years and, and found mentors to help train me and to, have, and to be on calls and to experience and to teach and to train on leadership, on communication, on personal growth and development, um, on what influence really is and looks like. That it's not just positional. It doesn't matter what your position is. It matters about influence. Um, it's really changed my perspective. And as I started working with agencies and insurance professionals, I realized that if agencies want to grow, right, if agencies want to survive, they've got to empower and equip their agents. The best way for me to empower and equip agents is to empower and equip the agency leaders. So that's really kind of where I'm at with things, and uh, I, I'm just I'm having a blast. I love doing this. I love um, helping leaders provide new information because when you see that uh, influence, you see that the leadership does more than just you know creates a little increase in the bottom line or a new tool or a new resource. Uh, that it's much bigger than that. It really changes lots of things, right? Uh, that's where I get into the fact that. That, that great, you know, or the, the good agencies or good organizations uh, will grow followers. And, and they can grow a little bit, maybe, maybe not. But the great organizations, the great agencies, they develop, they find, develop, and build leaders. And, and that's really what I want to do. And again, when you hear leader, I know for me, oftentimes it was, oh, a leader is a person who writes their name on the check or the person who has the power or the person who's on the stage, right? Um, but that's not really who a leader is. There's a lot of aspects. Of leadership that include that certainly without a doubt but it's much broader it's much more important it's much more in depth than that 
And so um, what I want to do um, today is, is talk about the four levels of influence. Um, and I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to share this on my page too, just so it is um, is out there. So just give me one second here. And again, there's I don't believe there's anybody. <laughs> this page has been uh, primarily, again, not used a whole lot. Uh, and I'm going to start to use it um, for these live Facebook, Facebook calls and uh, and grow from there. But let me just um, let me find that. And then I'm going to get into, uh, I'll go ahead and share it. I know it's ex nothing more exciting when someone's uh, looking down at their, their phone. But I'm going to go ahead and share this. Okay, so now I'm, uh, I should be shared on my own page as well. But, you know, again, sharing my own story, uh, the reason why I did that again is that leadership is, is needed so much now uh, more than ever. And um, I really want to take it to the next level and, and build upon that with agencies and become a person that can help mentor and motivate and model some of these things so they can grow their agencies. So what I want to talk about today is the four levels. Uh, and this is something that I'm building in, in my workshops. This is something I'm building in a keynote, in training, training modules that I'm doing. Um, but these four levels of All right, I think I'm back. <laughs> I think I'm back. Lost my connection there, but I think we're back now. Um, so again, these four levels of influence. Um, you know, again, leadership is often discussed, but rarely understood and utilized. And so when you understand that leadership is influence, right, the four levels of influence go like this. Um, and when you build upon these four levels, it becomes very, very powerful, where again, it turns into basic growth or stag, you know, being a stagnant agency or stagnant organization into a high, powerful, growing, thriving, multiplying type of agency. So here's the first, uh, the, the, the four levels, and I'm going to start with number one. Number one is modeling, right, modeling. Now, I am a father of four with the fifth on the way. Um, I will tell you right now here, and now we're on Facebook Live and YouTube, um, no, that was not planned. Uh, yes, I know how that happens. Uh, <laughs> for those that ask me, you know, I get it. I, I know how this all works. Uh, doesn't mean I've taking all the proper uh, precautions, but I know how it works. But I am currently, a, again, a dad of four. And one thing I can tell you, and anybody who is a parent can attest to this, is that people watch what you do. Your kids watch what you do way more than what you tell them, right? And it's funny how, um, you know, you can do something, right? You can do something and um, you can be working with your, with your, or, or saying something to your kids or whatever, and two years later, they come back and they say, hey, dad, remember when you did that? And you're like, what? I don't, I don't remember that. So again, modeling is so important. And modeling starts with integrity, right? Integrity is the foundation of every single thing that we do. And we take integrity for granted. Yet when you look at businesses in particular, most of the collapse of business, a lot of the collapse of organizations, or at least the downfall of many organizations starts with what? Integrity. Right? There's integrity at the top, there may be integrity at the middle, there's lack of integrity in different places. And so, you know, I love this quote, a uh, mentor says, integrity commits itself to character over personal gain, to people over things, to service over power, to principle over convenience, to the long view over the immediate. Right? Are you playing the long game? And again, I think most of us, if I ask a crowd, and I often do this, you know, do you have integrity? Well, yeah, of course we do, Brandon, we all have integrity. But when you look at things that happen, right, there's a lot of, uh, of, of those things that happen in our lives that we go, ooh, I gotta think about this, right? I can think years ago um, when I was active in the insurance world, uh, we took a business ethics class. And um, it was an insurance ethics class and everyone kind of laughed, you know, oh gosh, we gotta go to the insurance ethics class. Um, and I kind of thought that too. And I went down there and I started listening to stories, right? Just stories of real life situations that happen where there are issues where you go, hmm, what do I really do here? And it wasn't long after that that I ran into my own like integrity issue where I had to think about things. I, uh, I had a large client, or actually at this, this point it was a prospect that I was working with, a very large prospect that I knew if I wrote the account would be a, a great, you know, great commission for me, my family, um, all those kind of things. And I pretty much had it ready to go. Uh, but what happened was, was that um, it wasn't that maybe, oh, I don't know, uh, you know, two days before I was ready to buy in this account that I learned some information that may cause the pricing to change. In fact, it may even cause the fact the underwriter say, I don't want this account. And I'm sitting there going, oh, is, that, is it that big a deal? Do I, do I need to tell the underwriter that? I mean, these things cross my own mind, right? Because you think about, I don't want to lose this account. And as I started thinking about it, you know, as I said earlier, are you going to play the short game or the long game? Because even though this account was important to me, 
Number one, I wanted to live by my own sense of integrity. Number two was the fact that I knew that if I shortchanged the underwriter, if I didn't disclose all this information, even if I got this one account, there's a chance that once it was found out or if it was found out, I would never get any more. Right? Integrity is so foundational. And long story short is I did. I disclosed everything to the underwriter. There was a few slight changes. I called the prospect. They said, yeah, I get it. We made it and we wrote the account. It worked out. It doesn't always work that way, but it worked out. Right? So that's level one is modeling. If you're going to be a person of influence, if you're going to be a leader in any segment, you've got to model behavior day after day. People don't do what you say. They do what they see. Just like our children. It's no difference with teams and employees and anybody that you're working with, your community. They see what you do. You, you, you can't be one person over here and another person over here. It doesn't work that way. People used to think, well, I'm one way in life and one way in business. No, you are who you are. There's no business ethics. There's just ethics. Right? There's just ethics. So level number one is mob. And level number two is motivating. Right? Being a motivational influencer means that you encourage people and communicate with them on an emotional level. Motivating means you've got to get a little closer, right? Modeling can be done a little bit at a distance. You're just doing your thing. Motivation comes with a little more intentionality, a little more emotion behind it. So what are some ways that you can motivate people? Well, when I think of motivation, at least for me, when I think of motivation, I think of, again, I, some people say, hey, Brent, are you a motivational speaker? Well, I, I guess uh, to a degree. I like to be, consider myself a motivational teacher because I want people to do things with the information, not just get excited and then go walk off and go do their own thing. But motivation always seems to be someone, again, speaking from the stage or a coach shouting from the sidelines, right? Or you can do it and all these, you know, again, kind of being very in your face, so to speak. But what I've really understood about influence and leadership, that can be an aspect of it. But real motivation to me uh, comes under five different areas. Right? It comes under the area of, I talk about integrity, number one, being modeling, but nurturing, right? Are you nurturing people? Are you, are you, are you filling them up, right? It's important. Um, that's number one. Um, faith in people. A motivator has faith in people. Um, when you help people believe more in themselves, and that, you know, again, you believe in them more than they believe in themselves, it can be one of the most powerful things you can possibly do. Right, having faith in someone. Has, has there ever been a time in your life where um, you've been doubting yourself, you've had a self-limiting belief, you've been questioning your, uh, your skill level, your education, your background, right? I'm not good enough, but I'm not good enough. And someone comes to you and instills faith and says, you know what, I have no doubt in my mind that you can accomplish this. I have no doubt in my mind you can accomplish this. And again, with my own family, my kids, there's part of me where there's times to correct and there's times to nurture and to have faith in people. Right? Not looking at people where they are today or what they've done today, but who they can become. And when you understand that, you become a very dynamic leader, a dynamic influencer. Listening. When you think of motivation, do you think of a listener? Right? I coach people one-on-one. -on -one. And one of the things that is important, if you think of a coach, you think of someone who's instructing. But a great coach, a really great coach, is a great listener. Right? They, 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 they listen into what's being said and to what's not being said. If you want to be a person of influence, if you want to gain leadership credibility, you need to learn how to listen intentionally. Right? You probably heard the phrase, we have two ears, one mouth for a reason. Use them appropriately. Right? And then the last part of motivation that I want to talk about is, is understanding. Right? Seek first, as Stephen Covey says, seek first to understand, then to be understood. This kind of you know, aligns with listening, but understanding where people really are. I think one of the biggest mistakes that people make in communication is the sin of assumption, right? that we assume things, good or bad. Right? I've assumed good things have been wrong. I've assumed negative things have been wrong, but we just assume. Right? We don't ask questions. We don't understand. Where are you currently at? And why are you currently there? Right? Tell me the context of that. Who would you surround yourself with? Who's influenced you? Who's been a big part of your life? Why? 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 Right? Ask questions and understand. It's very, very powerful. So that's a big part of, of motivation. But level three is this, is mentoring. And this starts to take it to the next level. You know, I've had a lot of mentors in my life. Many have come through books, <laughs> audio books. You see all the books behind me. Um, there's a lot of great books there that can become mentors, right, from the pages or from audio. Um, also, I've had mentors that I've worked with in, in an office. 
Uh, I had my very first uh, real life mentor, I would say, you know, as far as besides my dad, my mom, um, certainly were great mentors to me throughout my entire life. But in the business world, when I took my first job, um, I had someone, and I'll just mention his name, he probably will never listen to this, but Tim Patterson is, is an example of someone who was a, an agent um, with an agency I work with that probably didn't even realize it. He was just a person who understood this idea that he could add value just by, by helping other people. You know, he wasn't getting paid for it. Um, he was just showing a young guy the ropes. And, and I think, you know, and again, at this point in my life, I've, I've now paid for mentors and coaches, certainly, uh, to kind of take me to the next level. But mentoring is pouring your life into other people and helping them reach their potential. That's what great leaders do. And when you do this, you, can't, you can never have more influence, right, that when you do something like that. Again, we look at influence, we often look at it from the wrong lens. So to be a high-level mentor, you must learn to enlarge people, right? make them bigger, right? help grow them. That is such a powerful thing, right? Um, my mentor says, put a 10 on everyone's head. Maybe they're only at a 7, but can you help them get to a 10? Right? To, to, to enlarge them. Also to be a navigator. Great mentors show you the way, don't they? Right? Um, I had mentors of mine say, listen, you, you can go through uh, 10, 15, 20 years of mistakes that I've made. Um, you certainly can do that and you'll get to where you want to go. Or we can talk and you can learn about all the mistakes I made and maybe shorten that learning curve. Right? Because they're navigating. They're kind of walking me through these, these, these icy waters, so to speak. Right? Certainly. Um, what else do mentors do? They connect. Uh, there's a great quote that leaders touch a heart before they ask for a hand. Right? That's how you mentor people. It's more than just a head issue. It's a heart issue, and that comes through connection. So again, level one is modeling. Level two, motivation. Level three is mentoring. And the final level, which it really gets exciting, this is where I, I get excited when I come in and talk to organizations and I do workshops. If you can follow this process... And by the way, it's a process. It takes time. If you expect over... Looks like I cut off there, but I'm back. Again, if you're looking for quick results, you're going to be disappointed. So this is all a process. The highest level of influence, when it really comes down to when you get good at it, is multiplication. Right? Um, it comes with how do you reproduce other leaders? That it's beyond my ego. It's beyond just me. Right? My legacy isn't about just who I am and what I do, but what I leave behind me, who I empower and reproduce and replicate in the process. Right? That people can become bigger than me. The greatest thing to happen is to say, wow, I mentored, I modeled this person and over a period of time. They've now multiplied beyond me. Um, I can think of, you know, there's so many examples of that, but in the uh, personal growth and, and, the, and, and the development industry, um, one of my very first personal growth mentors is a guy by the name of Jim Rohn. I've mentioned him in different blogs I've written, and, and Jim Rohn has you know, passed away several years ago, but one of the all-time business philosophers. Guess who one of his protégés was? Tony Robbins, right? Now, whether you like Jim Rohn or Tony Robbins, it doesn't matter. The point is that Jim Rohn has been gone, and Tony Robbins is doing his thing because of some of the things that he took from Jim Rohn. And Jim Rohn doesn't go, oh, my gosh, you know, even when, when Tony was big before Jim passed away. It was never, oh, my gosh, Tony is surpassing me. I, I've got to push him down. No, it's how do I enlarge him? How do I reproduce him even more? Because that's what leadership is all about. And by the way, when you look at organizational levels, when you understand these and you get to the multiplying stage, your organization doesn't just grow, it multiplies. Right? It multiplies. But here's the thing with reproduction, here's the thing with replication, is that it does take time. You know, one of the analogies you can think about is that, um, you know, if you were going to run a race and you were the best, right, you were the best runner, you were the fastest, as it happens to a lot of business owners and leaders or sales producers, right? They're the best, and they're out there doing their thing. And then they come to a leadership role where now they've got people in their care, right? That they're trying to help model and mentor and motivate, right? They have two options. You can run the race as fast as you did before with never looking back, straightforward, right? Or you can realize that over a period of time, if I slow down and help bring people with me, I may not finish first, or I may not even, you know, finish as fast as I wanted to, but I'm going to finish with more significance. 
right? And, and if you look at it again, just from a, I'm, I'm a, I'm a competitive guy, so I get where that's hard to understand. But if I'm looking at a team sport, and again, tracks individual, but let's just pretend, you know, we're, we're having a team event here, right? If I can, instead of finishing first and all the other teams finishing second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, what if I finish instead of first, I finish second, but I also finish fourth and fifth and seventh and eighth because I brought my whole team, right? Our team is going to do exceptionally well. And over a period of time, you'll get better. We're all going to be moved to the top of the pack. So studies have shown this. Studies have shown that 85% of leaders produce followers. So 85% of leaders produce followers. 10% of leaders produce leaders. But only 5% of leaders reproduce other leaders. See, it's easier to get somewhere first, I just said, but it's more significant when you bring others along with you. So I'll just recap here. I've been on for about 20 minutes. And again, I know this page is pretty quiet right now over a period of time. I'm going to bring people on and, and do more of these. But, um, you know, again, I'm going to put these on YouTube as well. But just understand this, that when you understand influence and you understand leadership is influence, and you, get, and you start to work through these four levels, modeling, motivation, mentorship, and multiplication. Again, the exciting thing for anybody in the insurance world, in particular who I speak with, agencies and organizations, is that you don't get this little bitty growth and then frustration and stagnation. You get multiplication, right? Because you're empowering your entire team. You know, I, I say it this way. What if, right, and you get a lot of organizations where you've got all these different people, maybe one person kind of takes the reins and they go from a seven to a nine. Yay, this person is knocking out of the park. But what if you as a leader can bring everybody up with you, right? If the, the, the threes become fives, the fives become sevens, the seven becomes nine, your organization, your culture, your attitude, your results, bottom line, right, results multiply. And so that's why I'm passionate about teaching this, talking about this. Um, I do have ongoing Becoming a Person of Influence workshops every month. Uh, I'm kind of tinkering with those and trying to improve them, make them better as I go along. I do keynotes on this. Um, I do trainings with groups on this. But again, if you're an agency or organization who's looking to take your influence and leadership to the next level, I'd love to help you. I hope this video uh, gave you some value again today. Uh, again, we'll talk to you soon. And I should be on this channel about once a week, but we'll, we'll see what happens. All right, take care.